Oregon State Representative Newt Bueller, a Republican candidate for governor, calls for an independent investigation into why the state overpaid Oregon health organizations more than $74 million from 2014 to 2016. Governor Kate Brown says it's time to move forward and stop it from happening again. But Representative Bueller calls it chaos and incompetence. He joins us tonight to talk about the Oregon Health Authority scandal and his campaign for governor against a familiar opponent. From KGW News, this is Straight Talk with Laurel Porter. Good evening, welcome to Straight Talk. I'm Laurel Porter. As we head toward the end of the year, the political season of 2018 is just around the corner. And Oregon will see another election for governor. The primary is in May. Republican Newt Bueller is hoping to win the chance to challenge Democrat Governor Kate Brown in the general election in November. Bueller is an orthopedic surgeon in Bend and currently serving in the Oregon House. It could be a rematch of their race for Secretary of State in 2012. Brown won that race and became governor when John Kitzhaber resigned. Brown beat Republican Dr. Bud Pierce in 2016 in the election to finish Kitzhaber's term. Joining us now to tell us why he thinks Oregon should make a change this time and elect him to the state's top spot, welcome to my guest, Oregon State Representative Newt Bueller. Welcome to Straight Talk. Thank you, Laurel. Thanks. One Thanks of the last me. times you were here was when you were running for Secretary of State. Was there a pivotal moment when you decided you wanted to be governor? I don't think there is a pivotal moment. It's been an evolution, you know, that uh, I've seen being in the legislature now for four years that uh, the state so much needs a change in direction. So many problems aren't being fixed, big problems with regards to our, our schools, with regards to transportation, with regards to our taxes and budget. And after a while sitting there in the legislature, you have to say enough is enough and you have to stand up and really try to fix these problems. Let's let our viewers know a little bit more about you. We took some bio information sure. from your website. New Bueller grew up in Roseburg. He's the first generation of his family, along with his brothers, to attend college. He earned his degree in microbiology from Oregon State University and became OSU's first Rhodes Scholar. He studied politics and economics at Oxford University and earned his medical degree from Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. He built his medical practice as an orthopedic surgeon in Bend and helped build the Center, a patient-focused orthopedic and neurosurgery care facility in Bend. It includes 40 medical providers and more than 200 employees. Since 2015, Newt Bueller has represented Bend in the Oregon House of Representatives. He's married to Patty, who's an eye surgeon, and they have two grown children. And then, as we mentioned, you ran for Secretary of State in 2012. You got just about every major newspaper endorsed you during that election, yet Kate Brown beat you by a significant margin. And we haven't had a Republican governor, what, in three decades since Vicatia. Chris Dudley came close, about a point and a half from, from winning. What's different this time? Why do you think you're the Republican who can break that streak? Yeah, well, I learned a lot in that race for Secretary of State. Probably, Laurel, the most important thing I learned is that I really don't like to lose, so I don't intend to lose this time. Uh, and I, as, you, as you drew out, there has been people who've run as Republicans who've got, come very close to winning in these elections. Chris Dudley, you know, came within a few thousand votes. Uh, just last election cycle, you see that uh, Dennis Richardson, who won a statewide election as, as a Republican. And, and your viewers may not realize it, but uh, I represent now an overwhelmingly Democratic district, the most Democratic seat held by Republicans. So there's clearly a, a need for a different type of Republican candidate that can appeal to all kinds of voters in Oregon, just not Republicans, but importantly, independents and, and moderate Democrats. You have uh, had harsh criticism for Governor Brown and millions of dollars in overpayments of Medicaid funds, more than $186 million that last look uh, the Oregon Health Authority made to Oregon's coordinated care organizations. The Oregonian uncovered this through a public records request, and as a result, you sent a letter to the governor, and I want to read part of that letter, and then we'll talk about that. You said, as a physician and lawmaker who supports Medicaid and its expansion, I am deeply concerned about the chaos, incompetence, and cover-ups of the past three years. These failures are causing long-term damage to the effective delivery of Medicaid to those who need it, has destroyed the atmosphere of bipartisan innovation that has historically characterized Oregon health care policymaking, and has significantly undermined taxpayer confidence in state government. 
Worst of all, every health care dollar that's been wasted or mismanaged on your watch is a dollar that isn't available to provide health care or promote better health for Oregonians. What do you want the governor to do in response? Yeah. Well, look, as a physician and as a lawmaker, I want to shine a light on health care in Oregon, not so that people have less health care, but actually that people have better health care and less expensive health care. And that's really the focus here. We've seen over the last four or five years that there has been a, a negligence with regards to the Oregon Health Authority. We see, starting with Cover Oregon, where there is a $400 million shortfall from failed websites and computers and, and software, and then Recently, we see probably $200 million miss, misspent because 45,000 people were put on Medicaid that shouldn't have been. And, and then recently, and what my letter really concentrates on is, is the fact that overpayments were made probably close to $100 million. When you start adding all those up, that starts to become big dollars, big dollars that shouldn't be going to a failed bureaucracy, but should be going to care for some of the most needy people in the state of Oregon. That's really what my goal is. Do you want her to take any action as a result? Absolutely. I think there's enough questions. I think voters in Oregon really want action. We've been hearing about it for three or four years now. All the problems with regards to Cover Oregon, with regards to Oregon Health Authority, three directors in five years. So I've asked for an independent director, an independent investigation to look at these things and really draw it out for people. Let's share all the documents, all the emails on the chain of decision making and who made those decisions. And then if there truly were big overpayments to Medicaid providers, we should get that money back. That's the people's money and we should get it back into the general fund to be used for, for other purposes. The governor has asked the Oregon Health Authority to design a website and put a website up to put all the public records up there, anything related to this issue. Is, is that a not enough? Do you want her to do more in that regard? Yeah, we haven't seen those records yet, so we would love to see them put up on that website and, and shared. There's been, you know, a lack of of, uh, of transparency all along. Remember the the chief technology officer who is really responsible for Cub Oregon. There was a settlement, you know, over a million dollar payoff to someone who was responsible for that, and, and confidentiality agreement signed. I think we really need that kind of independent investigation. Bring all these facts out onto the table and let everyone decide for themselves what's going on in the Oregon Health Authority. When it comes to an independent investigation, uh, we asked the governor for, for a comment and she said that she's already brought on Pat Allen and a new leadership team to identify and correct those issues. She says that she is being transparent with the public and the governor says the Medicaid funding issues that you're talking about yeah. are more a lack of business rigor rather than malfeasance. And she says that taxpayer dollars are better spent rather than on an independent investigation like you're talking about, about more on a course correction. Yeah. How would you respond? Yeah, well, I think millions have already been wasted in an independent investigation would not be very expensive. And remember, uh, the governor is Pat Allen uh, boss, right? So that's not independent. We need to re-establish confidence in the Oregon Health Authority. So we need someone who is independent, who's going to take in the facts and make the decision without having uh, uh, to answer to a boss or anyone else. And I think that's what the, the people of Oregon want and, and truly what they deserve here. And we asked the governor uh, to respond to your letter and we got this from her on Thursday. She said, I have directed OHA's new leadership team to move forward methodically and intentionally to understand the full scope of problems at OHA not to come up with a band-aid solution for the sake of political gamesmanship. I am focused on meeting Oregonians' expectations for swift action and zero tolerance for the waste of taxpayer dollars by setting clear expectations for the state employees that carry out this vital work, not on finger-pointing for short-term political gain. Yeah. Any response to that? Well, I think the governor should have done that three years ago when she took over. I mean, these were not surprising revelations. Remember, she was Secretary of State who was in charge of the audit function, and not a single time as Secretary of State did she even audit Cover Oregon. When all this was coming out back in 2013 and 2014, so we've had an astounding lack of leadership from the governor. First, as Secretary of State, when she should have been auditing these programs and bringing attention to it, and then when she got into office, should have fixed the problems three years ago, not let them drag drag on. Remember, you know these revelations wouldn't have come out if it wasn't for the Oregonian and other people in the press asking about it, and then with uh, Secretary of State Richardson's audit, and then the governor really followed. She didn't lead on this issue. It's time for the governor to lead, not to follow. 
Let me follow up on that on the open records because you've been talking about public records and the importance of the media having access to that and the Oregonian uncovered this story as a result. Once people are elected, sometimes they call for public records to be open before they're elected and once they're elected, they are less willing to be transparent. Would you make a guarantee? What kind of promise can you make Oregonians that you would be as transparent as you're asking the current governor to be? Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that is, that is one of the key jobs of any leader, especially in the state of Oregon, to be transparent, to look at the data, share the data, and, and actually also explain how you're going to solve problems and what you intend to do with it. All too often, uh, you know, we, we see a lot of political gamesmanship, a lot of political theater, but not a whole lot of action on solving the big problems in the state of Oregon. The big problems with regards to Oregon Health Authority, our schools, our transportation structure, those are the types of things that people want to see happen. Let me hold you to that as far as uh, making public public records accessible because the fees for public records for the media to, or the public to ask for open records is exorbitant in yeah. Oregon. Yeah. It's much more reasonable in the state of Washington. Would you be willing to get behind making that a more reasonable structure and following our neighbors to the north? Yeah, absolutely. We have to improve that process. We have to make it more transparent. And you know, I've, I've worked very diligently uh, uh, as, a, as a result of the Kitzhaber uh, uh, scandals in allowing public whistleblowers much more protection. Remember, some of the most important people in terms of drawing out transparency is our loyal public employees who have the bravery to call out fraud, abuse, and protection. And as a result of the Kitzhaber affair, now they have much more protection because I passed legislation for those loyal public employees that, that take that brave stand and call out those problems. Let's talk a little bit more about health care. You opposed a bill in the last legislative session that ensured coverage of 350,000 Oregonians covered under the Oregon health care plan through a provider tax on hospitals and insurance companies. That measure passed the legislature with bipartisan support. Why did you uh, oppose that? Yeah, not with bipartisan support. There was only two or three Republican votes and, and they were encouraged to vote for that. And uh, we had a great proposal, a counter proposal that would allowed everyone who was covered under Medicaid now to still be covered, but it wouldn't have covered additional services, mainly a, a complex reinsurance that program. That came late to the game, didn't it? Um, your that bill that you're talking about, or it wasn't even a bill yet, was it? No, it's a bill. There's there's a bill number. It's fully drafted. It's been well vetted. Uh, what we didn't include in that bill, though, we would cover the Medicaid uh, expansion population, but not the reinsurance program, which is a complex, essentially, bailout for the individual marketplace, which is not working very well right now. And, and that individual market certainly needs to be fixed. As, as you know, many people are now paying more uh, on their monthly premiums for he health care than their mortgage, and that's a big problem. But just putting more money in to bail out a, a broken individual insurance market uh, while you increase other people's tax or other people's health insurance to pay for it is a problem. And now that whole thing's been referred to voters, and now it's the form of Measure 101, and voters will be voting on that in January. And well, let me just let viewers know what that means. A yes vote will keep the additional funding, the hospital provider tax passed by the legislature. A no vote will stop the assessment, and the legislature will have to decide what to do in February. How will you vote on that? Yeah, I'll, I'll be a no vote. You I mean, there, there is plenty of revenue to take care of the most important part of that bill, and that's paying for the Medicaid expansion population. Those those people who, who are some of the neediest people in, in Oregon who qualify for Medicaid, and we can fill that, that gap without a health insurance tax on people's premiums. Because that's what people are worried so, about, the 350,000 Oregonians, 120,000 children, that if this fails in January, that their health care coverage is going to be in jeopardy. Can you guarantee them that they won't lose their health coverage? Absolutely. Remember, Laurel, I've been a, a physician taking care of many of these people in Oregon for the last 25 years. I know these people need these services. Sometimes it's literally life or, or death. We have to make sure those people have access to those important services, and we have alternatives. You remember the, the revenue projections just came came in. They're up $50 million uh, for this biennium. Uh, we can increase the cigarette tax. We can add a new vape tax. There's plenty of ways to, to fill the, the, the leftover portion, which is probably only about 150 to $200 million. We can fill that hole. Everyone will be covered in the Medicaid You think you can do that population. in a short session that Absolutely. you weren't able to do in the long session? Absolutely, yeah. 
Yeah, and, and the good thing about the short session is now we have reliable numbers coming from the Oregon Health Authority on how many lives are actually covered. It's one of the reasons we are opposed to it in the long session is because we had all these conflicting numbers. How many people really do qualify for Medicaid in Oregon? As you see, you know, 50,000 people didn't qualify. So now I'm much more confident in the numbers. We can go back and, and draw out how much we're going to need to raise, and I'm sure we can do that in the short session. I'm confident we can do that. And it can truly be in a bipartisan fashion unlike what this last bill was and that's important we have a, a long history in this state of having bipartisan cooperation with regards to health care innovation unfortunately that's really seriously lagged behind under our current governor this, this divisiveness now around health care is really deeply disappointing to me as a as a physician and lawmaker we need to get back to those bipartisan roots and create some really innovative good policy to take care of the most needy people in Oregon I'm going to switch gears here against the backdrop of more allegations of sexual harassment against high profile men in power this week in the private sector. Let's talk about sexual harassment at the Oregon State House in the public sector. You have formally called on Senator Jeff Cruz to resign following allegations from numerous women in the legislature that he touched them inappropriately. He has so far as of this taping not resigned and this week the spokesman for the Oregon Republican Party said that Senator Cruz should remain in office while an independent investigator looks into the accusations. Do you still think Senator Cruz should resign? Yeah, Laurel, I'm an independent-minded Republican. When I see wrongdoing, I uh, am more than willing to, to speak up and, and say what I think. And what I think is that we have a serious problem in this country with regards to sexual harassment. And too many people are using their power, their privilege, and their position to harass others. And it's got to stop. And the first place that it has to stop in Oregon is in our state legislature. For way too long, it appears that that kind of behavior was tolerated, and we need to show the best example in the Oregon legislature that that kind of behavior is just not going to be tolerated. And I think the preponderance of evidence is there that Senator Cruz should resign. He's been stripped of all his committee appointments by, uh, by Senate President Courtney. I think the only committee he remains on is actually the governor's task force on opioid abuse. Uh, uh, and there's been numerous colleagues, colleagues of, of Senator Cruz's who's made these allegations and I think he just can't adequately represent to his constituents any, any longer. Are you aware of any other inappropriate behavior during your tenure as a lawmaker in the State House? You know I've only been there for four years uh, so uh, yeah I've been there and I've recognized now with these complaints against, against Sen Senator Cruz and other people sharing that there is a serious cultural problem that has been there for decades. We need to solve that that we have to be an example for the rest of the state and it can't be tolerated. As you talk about, this is a cultural reckoning where women are finding their voices and there have been more than a dozen women who have accused the President of the United States. A lot of people are talking about this of sexual harassment and assault over the years. What should the consequences be, should be for the president? Yeah, yeah. I don't think this is a partisan issue in any way. As, as we see, there's plenty of people on both sides of the aisle, Democrat and Republican, that have run into the, these problems, both at the national level and, and our state level. If anyone is sexually harassing someone, using their power and privilege and position, I don't care who they are or where they are, why they're in office, they need to stop that behavior and they need to probably leave the office if those, if those concerns are substantial. Should there be any consequences for President Trump right now? I don't think there's any allegations right now of, of President Trump why he's in office. Important distinction. The allegations, for example, are Senator Cruz and, and others in, in the Senate where these occurred why they were in office. Time for us to take a break. Okay, There's a lot more sure. to talk about. We'll continue our conversation with Newt Bueller, candidate for governor, right after the break.